Today I decided to share with you um, sort of a bestiary of sorts that I've been working on. So bits and pieces of code that I picked up from around YouTube and applied a little creativity to. Um, I shouldn't have to tell you, but you're going to need a, um, a lot of sprites uh, for what we're doing. Um, what I'm going to be showing you is um, essentially from a sphere level two objects in it, and it's going to have some sprites. two objects for this also. Um, how this is going to look when it's finished is like this. You'll have the scrolling menu and when you click on the button, the text will pop up um, where you put it and the emojis are going to show as well as the character sprite and character portrait. Um, also, when you navigate through the pages for this one, um, the spots will change. You'll see a lot of different icons here now, um, as well as the colors change a bit. This can be made to look a little flashier, but it's a work in progress, and it is a little buggy, so bear with me. Um, and this is just to demonstrate that each time um, a page is turned, it will. Um, change all the sprites. This can be set up to go through an entire system of rooms, if you like. Um, all of these little cursor things, with the words, were uh, picked up from an 8-bit stuff video on a way to mix. A really good demonstration for these tools, but I would recommend um, checking it out. Um, as you see, it will walk back and forth through the different rooms. Um, but anyway, let's uh, have a look. I guess some of the code. The first thing we're going to want to do is create a couple of objects. Um, an object and we're going to call this um, uh, OBJ test Bizarre. now in that of course you're going to want to put your standards um, hello everybody create event and uh, step event shows up in your list. Um, we'll discuss these two variables a little later, and you should not really have to worry about it. Um, that is our create event for now. Um, and with our step event, Feel free to pause if necessary. With our step event, we're going to paste this bit of code. Um, our action is just that we have a uh, action button. Anyway, um, if item equals zero, an action. Um, you don't really have to worry about the rest of this. These are my variables for 
bond our circuit. Um, <coughs> just to make sure I look at the bond here. I'm not sure how it works, but I think. So, this circuit is what you see here. Uh, you see it goes up and down. This code regulates the position of how this go. Um, for example, if I go to this one, you'll see that this list no longer goes up and down, but it makes like a semicircle, which is a it's pretty cool. Um, and that's accomplished by manipulating these digits. where we're at so far. Now, this is going to be M1, right here, kids turn red. Since this goes above, what's this goes above? Now we're going to, to create our second object. The first thing here that I want to do is give it a create event. Give it a step. I'll give it a draw GUI and then destroy. So for the create event. variables here are okay um, we'll get to that these variables make the sprites slide into position um, your text numbers are going to be the messages that pop up in your text box and how your sprites come out is it's kind of tricky. Um, for those who don't know, when you're doing text, it's not J is how you put a break in the text line. Um, if you see some of mine, it's, like, it's pretty long. You can probably see how far I can push that box. But anyway, um, for these variables, two sliders, this, this, these are going to be for my emojis and portraits. Um, and you put top equals one. And robot.txt equals true. Um, in my project, robot.txt equals true makes everything deactivate and pause. Um, that way, you know, your logic won't have any in the background. And you want to put this here because this will be the text that is displayed um, in the text box. And SPDs are going to make the text take um, different speeds as it's going along. Um, we'll go into the step next. In the step event, when I just code, this goes along with these variables. And okay, portrait X and portrait Y emojis emoji will be where the sprite spawns in. So in this situation, I have mine set to spawn on the screen and just down a little bit. And then the target X and target Y for the portrait and email, that is where you want the sprite to go to, 
So in this case, I want them to come off the screen and I want the portrait to go here and I want the uh, emojis to kind of slide over here. Now, in this case, this is how you set those. Um, Lerp will tell your spot to move, pretty much move to that position. Um, so I go from portrait X, which is the starting position, to target X, which is the end position, at a speed of 0 0.3. If you go um, like this speed of 30, your spot will work off of the screen. Um, same thing goes for the demo. Now, in my project, you will press left and right to um, flip the pages. So every time you press right, top will press the bold button. Um, so if you press left, it will work off zero. If it reaches zero, it will destroy the page and return to the library. Um, if top equals one, the upstream copy is going to be text equals one. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be the size of the text, and this will be the speed. You can change that here, it was equals to zero, so to be kind of fast, so it works out to be kind of slow. Now, for each one of your texts, you want to have um, an out, you know, that would give top out speed. Um, and right here, you see how it's set up if you were to check press red. Top plus equals one speeds at one time. Um, if the top goes over nine, I want it to destroy the page and go back to the library. Um, and if the top equals zero, then it will go back to the library. That is our step in there. Now, let's look at our draw to UI. This is where things get hazy. First, you want to put this here, but before we try, no, okay. You want to put this here first, which will call your font line to set to your SPF font. Um, I want them both to be alive in the center. Um, again, if top equals zero, this is destroyed. You want both to, I want them to actually be. So if top equals one, we're going to draw our, this is the sprite I'm using for the text box. Um, and it's going to come in at um, sub-image one. And this is the position where I'm going to have it. Um, you do not have to use the view X view. I'm working in GameMaker Studio 2. And so this is the base map of um, Game Maker 8 code. So in my videos, you will see the UX view sometimes. So this is going to draw our text box. This is going to draw our emojis. Um, remember, it's happy dogs. Oops. It's happy dogs here. I want one and five, so image is one and five, which is one and five for this box is always angry, this box will always attack you. And this will position them just above the text in this text box. Um, the same thing will go. This is going to draw the larger character portrait on the left hand side of the uh, screen. And I'm using sprite index uh, because some of these are animated and like this one doesn't even have any side images. 
this one does, and this is fun to draw the in-game character sprite, um, next to the box, but he's going to slide in from off screen. Um, this feels a bit good talking, so I'm going to draw some maggots in. Um, I'm going to use sprite index because they are animated sprites, and I'm going to position them just underneath um, my large Beelzebub sprite. Um, this one is centered, bottom center. Um, you'll have to pay close attention to the center of the larger sprites. It makes things easier when you are um, drawing them to screen. Um, to finish up this coat for this part, um, we'll draw a center coat to one, so you can see things. Draw a center front, this one front. And for this page, I want the text to be yellow, so I'll draw some color C yellow. And I'm going to draw the text at this position um, so that it will line up with my text box, which is a totally different looking um, X4. Um, now, when we flip the page, you'll see how. Um, That sprite is going to change to a different sprite. This is the in-game character sprite that you see. Um, the maggots will now go away because that sprite will no longer be on the page. Um, that's the gist of it, really. Um, you can repeat this as many times as you have um, text in your messages. And the fragrant, I'm just going to put, um, I don't want to go to the library. And that is it, really, for these two objects. And you just, you know, slap them into a ring. Um, and when you run it, this. Now, the thing I just showed you is when I go in, you'll see here on the first one, when it equals one, okay, here top equals one, cross sprite, southern is one, this coordinate, so that will be this black box, and the southern is one has the green marker. See, when you change the sun images, they will, some of them will change color, but they're not all cells you can see. Um, now, you see our text is scrolling up the center, and it is in the box. Our maggots are in place, our portrait is in place, our in game sprite is in place. When I change the page, Flips to a color, and this other sprite shows, and these two icons show for this poison damage and this physical damage, and we have some um, test talk here, and I'll show you the differences. Um, in talk equals one. We have as the you see the text one the same thing here. But we have here draw sprite emojis one and five. And down here you'll see draw sprite damage type email. So between these two pages, you see this sprite and these two sprites, as well as this one, they all change. Now, this one has some little something to do. Um, and when going through them, you should eventually change. Yes, they do. And if you cycle all the way through and reach top equals 10, it destroys, it goes back to 
this morning. Um, and once again, this whole summer can be applied to a series of rooms. Um, I've even applied this to um, inventories and open wheels. It really is a very nice, um, maybe some courtesy of investor. Um, if you like this video, please be sure to um, give the investors the video, E-A-D-S-G-A. Um, it seems to be a really good color. Well, anyway, I enjoy showing you this small demonstration and I hope you find it useful. Um, and if you tinker around with it, feel free to get back to me and show me what you've done um, with the code that you saw. This can also be used to create um, text boxes, obviously. Um, but we'll get into that another time. Thank you for watching.